Okay, we're coming up on nine minutes before the hour. Nine minutes before the hour. This is an emergency broadcast. This was not uh, scheduled. This is actually in response to a video by Watchfinder and Company. The link is in the description, so take a look at that uh, video. Highly recommend you take a look at that video. And since it's the weekend, it's Friday, I'm wearing my Congressional Country Club shirt so I can pretend that I'm at the Country Club relaxing. Okay, so that's how that works. Now, um, this is a little early, and we're not supposed to actually officially start for another about nine minutes. But I'm going to try to find the video here and just make sure that everything is the way it should be. Oh, I've got the munchkin voice, chipmunk voice. Good thing I started early. I'm going to restart the uh, Video Pro, and we're going to try this again. So give me a second here. Okay, we will see what happens now. There's the official time check about six minutes before the hour. And let me try to refresh this to see what we've got live. Okay, we're going to see what happens after this restart here, see what we've got. There we go. Hey, that worked. I wish somebody, we got some rocket scientists in the audience there. We got some very smart people watching right now. I wish somebody could figure out what causes the chipmunk voice because I have no idea. All I did was restart it. Oh, let me stop this. All I did was restart the uh, video pro. <laughs> somebody said keep the chipmunk voice. I did that once, and then a bunch of people complained and said they didn't like the chipmunk voice. So I think the vast majority didn't like the chipmunk voice. So, And I'm a little bit overexposed here, a little bit, little bit bright on the exposure, but I, I took it down one stop, and then it was a little bit dark. So this, with this particular shirt on, it's hard to get the exposure exactly right, so we'll just have to go with it. But this is in response to the WatchFinder video. And I'm sure a lot of you all have already seen it, but I'm going to play just a little bit of it here, just to so you all know what I'm talking about. And I did put so, a link you want a in the description submariner. of the video. You've got your 6,550 pounds, and you're bit. out the door I love on the his way to the shop. But when you get there, Fantastic you're told there's a waiting list. Yet, out of the corner of your eye, you see something else. The Grand Seiko Sport SBGA Okay, so that's the... Um, Here's the dilemma. Go ahead and stop Do that. Do you stick? That's the video that we're talking about. And he made a lot of really good points, but there are a couple of things that we need to uh, clarify and a few things that we need to straighten out. Watch Finder video, 10K views, uh, more than 1K likes. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. He does quality work. And... Uh, his macro shots are just fantastic and of course they showed off how spectacular the Grand Seiko is let's see um, <coughs> excuse me watch finder okay uh, they don't chipmunk uh, okay um, let's see <coughs> GS lookalike it took an L except for the case finishing Okay, um, we're going to talk about all this. <coughs> How do we know that the chipmunk voice isn't your real voice and that right now you're using sound effects to d deepen it? Well, there you go. That's a good point. You just have to come and meet me in person to, to figure that out. Some, some of the folks uh, have. The problem with the chipmunk voice is that it's not going to talk before you do, so it buffers a lot. Okay, got you. The Rolex overall is a better watch. Adam in the house. Uh, Joe, uh, Craig, is Joe Biden losing his marbles? <laughs> he might be. Uh, I heard that, I didn't watch the debate, but I heard that his dentures were coming loose and like slopping around in his mouth. <laughs> That's kind of, kind of a fail, but okay, so let's get into this. We're only about two or three minutes till the official start time, and this is an unofficial broadcast anyway. This is an emergency broadcast today because we need to clarify a few few little things here. Um, first of all, and Mark, the dog man, made this same mistake. To me, if I was going to get into a gun battle with the Submariner, I would certainly use the 231. I would use this model right here because that 
is is even a a better gun battle in my opinion than using the 229 the stainless steel version because this watch looks stunning it you put it right next to stainless steel and it's hard to tell the difference it really is it looks stunning and it's got the touch of gold on the dial where it has the GS and the Grand Seiko but more importantly it's a lot more comfortable on wrist and of course we always talk about watches that we actually use so if you're if we're talking about a watch that's in a collection and that you're not using or it's sitting in a box somewhere or something none of this applies none of this applies everything I'm gonna say now has to do with a watch that you actually wear and preferably that you wear 24 7 because that's where the comfort on wrist really comes into play is if you're actually wearing the watch on your wrist imagine that it's a wrist watch imagine it being on your wrist so that's first thing I would have used the 231 to go up against the sub now you can use the 229 that's fine but I would use the 231 alright so that's the first thing the second thing is he really he did talk about the size but he didn't he didn't make the clear point that with the sub that dial is about the size of a 36 mil date just he paused so that you all can let that soak in a little bit because of that rotating bezel that 40 millimeter watch the dial is more like the dial on a 36 mil Datejust and a lot of people complain oh the 36 mil is too small and all this stuff well that's the size dial you get it's roughly the same okay so the fact that this is 44 mils if you want a, a legible watch if you want a watch that's easy to read and that's the reason why a lot of people buy a divers watch that's the reason why I bought this one you're going to get a lot more legibility out of this because this one the dial is more like the dial that would be on like a 40 millimeter watch like a uh, Datejust 41 or like a snowflake something like that that that's about the size that this dial is so it's a significantly larger dial so more readable more legible etc he also talked about the spring drive and he said the Rolex is about two seconds a day and the spring drive one second a day okay so the specs I think on the spring drive they say it's 15 seconds a month but anyway in actual use the vast majority of them are way way better than that this one's about plus one second after five months let me let that sink in plus one second after five months and see the problem with somebody talking about watches like here in this video who has no real experience with the watches who's just holding them in his hand to shoot this video but he really doesn't have any real world experience with the watches he may not know these things and that lack of experience was also demonstrated when he talked about the clasp and he gave the sub the, the clear win when it comes to the clasp I disagree and yes this is from a Seiko he did make a comment that it's Seiko like this this came from the um, professional diver the marine master diver watch that's where they used got this clasp from and it is fantastic let me say again fantastic when I first got it I didn't really like it either I like hey I think the Rolex class looks better looks can be deceiving folks this clasp is is super functional and super comfortable and then the other distinction that he should have made is the bracelet itself the bracelet itself on this watch because of the design because of the pins because of the amount of flexibility in this bracelet and the finishing I might add that all lends to the comfort far superior comfort on wrist this watch compared straight up with a sub it's not even a fair fight this watch right here is much more comfortable on the wrist okay so with this watch you get first of all it's available second of all you can get it for less money even the titanium one it's this one right here third of all it's much more accurate Fourth of all, it will probably go even longer without servicing than the Rolex. The Rolex will go at least 10 years, maybe 20, at least, maybe 30 years. 
This one will probably go your whole lifetime if you're a young man. This will probably go, go 50 years, no problem. Because there's no escapement in it. There's no escapement mechanism in here to cause all that wear and tear. So there are a whole lot of advantages this watch has over the sub that this well done video here, it was well done, a lot of great macro shots and so forth. Play a little bit more of it. And wait for the Submariner, or do you twist and buy the Grand Seiko instead? Oh there, okay, we'll, we'll stop it. Stop it there with his brand on there so you guys know who it is. So, well done video. A lot of great macro, so on and so forth. But a lot of the, a lot of the points he made are kind of half informed points and points that somebody who just doesn't have much experience with the watches would say. Like for example, we've got a comment here in the, in the chat. Subclasp is much better hands down. No, it's not. No. No, this is much better. Much more comfortable on wrist. Much more functional. Much easier to adjust. Clearly, you've not had one of these watches, and you've not worn one, so you don't know. And, and I can, you know, I mean, that's normal for somebody to make assumptions uh, about things that they don't know, but we need to point out when they're wrong and, and uh, make, you know, on this channel, we're all about getting the facts right and, and uh, so that people can make informed decision based on the truth. Most GS divers are too thick except some 9F models. That's okay. This is 14 mils thick. Okay, so absolutely, if you're going to want to wear this under a shirt cuff, this is not the watch to wear. So, and I've pointed that out many times. This GMT right there will serve that purpose. That's only 12 mils thick, but that's not a diver's watch. That's a GMT, but it still has a screw down crown. It's got crown guards, so it's got a lot of the, the features that you might want. But absolutely. Uh, but then again, if you're going to wear the shirt, the, the, the watch under a shirt cuff, I wouldn't recommend a sub either. I'd buy a GMT. It's a little thinner than the sub. Or, even better yet, I'd buy the Yachtmaster. It's a lot thinner than the sub. So I don't think the sub is thin enough to wear under, under your typical shirt cuffs. I, of course, I, I really don't like the look of an oversized watch being worn underneath a, a shirt cuff. So I think you're better off wearing like a Datejust 36 or a Date, Date 836 or something smaller when, you're, when you've got a shirt, you know, shirt cuff all the way down. Now, if you're wearing a sport shirt like me or you've got your sleeves rolled up or whatever, it's a non-issue, the fact that this is 14 mils thick. It's really a non-issue because it's extremely comfortable. So it's, it's not a comfort issue. It's a shirt cuff issue, in my opinion. Okay, let's say here. Um, well, you got a winner. You got a winner. My GS Diver 231 is plus four seconds a month, Joey. Yeah, I mean, obviously some of them, mine is probably the most accurate 231 in the country, uh, but a lot of them are close to mine. Of course, I always get the best. You, you guys know that. So don't, you know, don't feel bad, but I always get the best. It's just the way that works. Um, <clears throat> but still, plus three seconds is a lot better than what he said in the video, is my point. They, they always outperform their, the, uh, what the specs would suggest. <clears throat> Let's see. GS dive claps is too thick, but the quick adjustment is too easy to extend. And the quick adjustment is too easy to extend. Mine works perfectly. I just lift this up. I can extend it right now. There, I just extended it a little bit, right? And then I can just like click it in one one click at a time till I get it exactly where I want it. So I mean, it literally takes seconds. Much much easier to adjust and to function than the than the Rolex one. It's not even a close call. And the glide lock is a lot longer. The whole clasp mechanism is a lot longer, and so I think that looks kind of goofy. Um, but anyway, from a function and comfort and wearability standpoint, it's not even a close call. But like I say, if you've just got the, Ro the, the Rolex in a box or something, if you're not really wearing it, then that's, this is all a non-issue. 
Um, let's see here. My only is okay. There were uh, too big. Okay. How about value retention? He talked about that. <clears throat> he talked about that. Um, obviously, the the Rolex, if you can buy one at list right now with the market overheated the way it is, you're going to do good. But um, this is this is not a normal situation, and a lot of people I think are going to get burned on the value retention thing on these steel Rolexes. I think a lot of people that bought several of them as investments, when the market turns down, I think that they're going to have their hat handed to them. I think it's going to not be a wise move to uh, look at watches as an investment. I think that's really uh, cruising for disaster. So I would not recommend anybody look at a watch as an investment. That class cost 150 though. You can buy it on eBay replacement part maybe they should make a higher quality class with the same features this one works fine I I have no problem with it at all it works fine it, I've been using it over a year I I open and close it a couple times a day I don't think it's gonna fail I, I think it's gonna be fine so time will tell but we'll see but that's also a plus if you have to replace it and it's, and it's less expensive to replace. In my book, that's a, that's a plus. But no, I mean, I have no problems at all with this clasp. Let's see, I need to go to the GSAD in Miami and try some on. There you go. That's always a good move. I own both bracelets. Uh, I do know. Okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, come on, Craig. Most YouTube channel are half informed no surprises there yeah well that's why we have this channel we we dig in deep on these things and try to get the facts uh, you know out there so that's what we do and somebody says nice one sir for 14 mils yes 14 mils this i think it's 14.1 thick craig is blinded by his love for, of gs hey i'm wearing it on my wrist okay so that says something I could obviously be wearing any watch I want and I'm choosing to wear this so that right there should say something um, seconds hand is off sync are you talking about on this that's just because of the camera angle that's the camera angle if you look straight on the second hand is, is right on the markers and as it goes around we'll let it go around here there will be times when it will be right on okay like right there is pretty close right there okay and then as it goes around it'll be off and that's because of the camera angle so again I mean and I've seen people say that oh yeah they don't even line up with the markers and all they're looking at some photo that was taken they're not looking at the actual watch and the photo with the camera angle, the, it'll be off the marker, right? It's extremely difficult to get that lens, get everything centered just right so that it, it's, it's perfect. Uh, this one is a little bit off to the side in the, in the frame. It's not centered in the frame, so it's virtually impossible to get it to uh, be straight on. So that's the deal with that. Um, let's see. I love GS, but I see clearly. I don't know what that means. I don't know what you mean by that. Um, California is, is the deal breaker for me as well. Great. Okay. Great watch. Simply too large for my wrist, David says in the house. Thoughts on Seiko Samurai? Um, if I was going to buy a Seiko, I would buy the Shogun. That's the one I owned for a couple of years and I, I really think that's a fantastic watch so I'd look at the Shogun and get them reasonably I think you can get them for around 500 bucks used uh, someone gave you again a contest to talk here are you done a hands on comparison emergency broadcast how about capitalize, capitalize on others content <laughs> I'm not capitalizing. I, I make almost nothing off of this channel. <laughs> Trust me, this channel doesn't uh, pay pay the bills around here. I, I have other sources of income to take care of that, um, Richard. So that's how that works. Uh, it's too easy to activate the extension. I know because I wear it. Mine doesn't 
when I'm wearing my watch throughout the day, it doesn't accidentally activate. Is that what yours is doing? If yours is doing that, then you've got a problem. If, if too easy to activate, you mean when you open this up, then it comes out a little. That's fine. That's no big deal. You put it on, you just push it in. I mean, that's not, that's not, that's a non-issue. Um, so, but it doesn't actually extend just while you're wearing it throughout the day for no, no reason. Mine doesn't, at least. The bezel on the Submariner ceramic is way nicer when I saw this diver in person. Well, okay, that's an, uh, you know, I mean, if you, if you really like the look of the ceramic, I like the look of this one. I mean, that's a, that's a judgment call. I think this one looks fine. I think the numbers are actually more readable on this one than on a ceramic sub. But that's just a, you know, what you like type of thing. Um, let's see here. I bought my, my, I bought mine at List back in March. I love it. The glide lock is amazing. There you go. Okay, well, there you go. If you like it, go with it. Um, I'm wearing my SBGN005 after three months. It's spot on. Love it. Joey in the house wearing that model right there. There you go. That's a good all-arounder. Heavy use all-arounder that is a good option. Absolutely. That's a very, that's certainly a competitive option to somebody that wants to buy a sub, you know, but can't get it. They're on the waiting list or whatever. You can buy that one for around three grand and be done with it and have a heavy duty piece. Uh, let's see here. Um, glad to be back from the business trip. Our Wags is in the house. He's been a traveling man. GS clasp is 11 millimeter stick versus seven millimeter for the sub. Yeah, and I, no problem at all. I've got it right on my wrist right here. It's, it's no problem. Works fine. Gives good balance to the watch. Again, it all comes down to actual use. You don't know until you actually wear and use these watches. You can look at specs all day long. It's like these people that look at the specs on the Android phones, and they say, oh, man, this is so much better than an iPhone, you know, because it's got this spec and that spec and that thing. And then you use them and they're garbage, right? And the operating system's terrible and the hardware's terrible. And the advantage that Apple has is they build the whole thing from soup to nuts. And they custom design that chip and the whole everything about it to work hand in hand with the software. And that's why the cameras are so much better. That's why everything is so much better on an iPhone is because of the way everything works together. Same thing here. And when you wear and use this watch for a while, then you realize, wow, they, they, they got it right with this watch. So that's how that works. Um, will be parallax effect uh, somewhere anyway. Never any watch hand will be aligned on every mark. There you go, Carlos in the house. Um, good point. I've only got a Seiko 5. Seiko 5, okay, there you go. I wonder what Grand Seiko resale value is like uh, you seen any in the gray mark? Well, these are usually around five grand if they're in good shape. You can search on eBay. I think you can get the titanium, this model, in decent shape for around five grand. Um, if you get a good discount, you should be able to buy one new for around six. Um, so, you know, they lose some when you uh, when you resell them, uh, but. Uh, not terrible, but again, I don't think it's a good idea to be buying watches and reselling them all the time. I, I think that that's uh, not wise. I think you're better off researching and getting the watch you really want and then just wearing it. I don't think uh, this buying and selling watches thing is, I think most people end up losing money doing all that. And some lose a lot of money. Uh, let's see, do you ever see yourself going back to the Apple Watch? Um, I don't know. Um, and going back, I mean, I wouldn't wear it all the time. Uh, wearing it sometimes on and off during the day. Maybe the next version. I, I will have to see what this always on, how bright it is, because it's dimmer than, you know, when you turn it or you touch it, 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 it gets brighter, right? 
And so if the always on function is kind of like dim and kind of doesn't look that great, then that kind of negates that as, as an advantage. So I'll have to see uh, what they do with the next version. If they get it to where the always on is really nice and bright and it, uh, yeah, it starts getting really useful. I, it starts getting tempting at that point. Um, and the Apple Watch is nice and thin. That one's only, the, the, the Gen 1 that I have is only 10 mils thick. It's nice and trim. You could definitely wear that as a dress watch, no, as an all-around watch, no, no question about it. Um, and again, the downside to this watch is this is not, you cannot force this into a dress watch situation. I would not recommend trying to wear this underneath a shirt cuff. I don't even care if your shirt cuffs are loose enough to, for it to fit. I still think it's too big a watch to wear in that kind of a scenario. Um, so that means you got to have two watches. you got to have a two-watch rotation. you got to have something that you can wear in the dress situation. And in my case, I'm going to use this GMT, at least for now. That's my dress solution, because that one will work. Let's see here. Will you be going to Sarasota this winter? I might spend some time down there. It just depends on how work goes and how the weather goes up here. If we have another mild winter, then it's not as bad. But I will probably spend some time down there for sure. Maybe not the whole winter, but yeah. Um, correct, Craig. Uh, churning and burning through the stuff is one of the easiest ways to lose tons of money. Yeah, and sometimes they don't really keep track of of all the money they're losing. Um, let's see here. Maybe around Washington, D.C. in March or Easter, too. Carlos is going to be in the house. There we go. We'll have to, you'll have to come visit. Let's see. I have a greater than 8-inch wrist, so I prefer a large cased watch, and I've always been drawn to divers. Well, there you go. This one is a fantastic piece. Uh, too big for, for most Asian wrists. Okay, yes, yeah, so I think that would be the solution. Go with that GMT because it's 39 and a half mils by 12 mils thick. So for a smaller wrist, definitely that. I would recommend that watch right there. Uh, let's see. I choose the Marine Master SBDB. O one one and have fallen deeply in love with it. Well, there you go. The Marine Master, that's a beast. That's a beast of a watch. That one you can you can take like this. Okay. Right? And use it as brass knuckles. Right? That's the watch to, to do that. So and see, when I played around with that, this did extend just a little bit, but watch what happens in use. I put it on, I just click it back in one little click, so it's right where it needs to be. Piece of cake. Okay, so there you go. Um, what do you carry with your every everyday, Craig? A pen, wallet, etc. Uh, I have a video here on the channel uh, talking about that. Uh, let me let me grab a couple of my EDC items real quick here. Okay, here we go. Oh boy. All right, EDC. EDC. All right, here we go. All right, I've got the, this is very rare. I've got a Victoria Knox. This is the scientist model. And notice it's relatively trim. But what's neat about it is it does have the, the uh, jeweler's loop. But what's even more important is it has this straight out Phillips head, which I don't like the one that comes out this way. I like this one. Okay? So this is called the Scientist. They're very hard to get, but sometimes you will see them on eBay for 
hundred or two hundred bucks. All right, so that one I've had for probably thirty or forty years. I've had a long time. Uh, my money clip I had made. I had some gold melted down and had this made out of a little over an ounce of gold. It's very, very thick, so it holds its tension very nicely. So that's the money clip. A Kent comb. I really like the Kent combs. They don't break. They hold up. I've got a number of these and I've got reviews of all these items on my channel. You do, do a search on my channel. The wallet. This one I got at uh, Saks Fifth Avenue many, many years ago. There's my pride and joy right there. Um, and it's held up great. It's uh, alligator. And it's a very trim wallet because I don't have to keep my money in there. I do have $100 bill in here folded up and stuck in here just for emergency. But this just has my credit cards and my driver's license and my insurance card, just the you know things like that. And I like keeping the money separate in the money clip from the wallet. Okay? And then this is just the, the, the Prius key, and this is a uh, brass hook. Took it in the pocket, and then this is a emergency whistle. <whistles> titanium. Okay? And then this is a titanium. Uh, who made this? Boker or who made this? I don't remember who made this tool. This is titanium multi-tool type thing. That's always in my pocket. And oh, I didn't grab the Sabenza, the Chris Reeves Sabenza. Let me grab that. <clears throat> okay. And this is this is carried in a in a sheath on my belt, the Chris Reeves Sabenza. Okay, so um, so that is there are a couple of other items, but that's generally EDC all the time in my pockets. Okay, and then I have some other stuff that I carry in a bag that that's always nearby. Uh, let's see, we're going to wrap this up here pretty soon. Um, Even as large as Marine Master Pro 600 meter is, with its all titanium build, it wears surprisingly light. Wow, okay. Um, if you're coming to the DC area, we may need to have a wrench gang dinner. There you go. Absolutely. Uh, spring 2020 wrench gang dinner. <laughs> Um, and somebody says they have a knife like that, like the Sabenza or the, or the scientist. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's see. Toyota and Grand Seiko Craig, your preference is for the safe and boring. Absolutely. I'm a boring kind of guy. Absolutely. Weather is pretty nice in L.A., it's hot, but not too hot. Good. Um, I don't see Grand Seiko boring. It's different and high end. Well, there we go. Um, hot. To, it's boring from a standpoint of it just works and it'll just run for decades. You don't have to worry about it, and it's spot on accurate. You don't have to worry about setting it all the time. So it just it just works. It's just like my Toyota. He makes a good point. I can go out and just start the Toyota and go. I don't even have to think about it. Okay, it's just it's just gonna work, um, and I like stuff like that. Uh, let's see here. Um, hot day in San Diego, but my Toyota AC AC system is keeping me cool, cool as a cucumber. There you go. Um, Carlos, okay, uh, I enjoy Las Vegas as much LA. It's hot, but you don't go to Las Vegas to spend a lot of time outside. Um, our close friends will be living in Montgomery County. We have to fix the date. We're planning November, but our hosts have a business trip. Yeah, Montgomery County, that's uh, 
I have a place in uh, Durwood. The Durwood estate is in Montgomery County. Uh, so I go down there fairly often. So, yeah, we can definitely rendezvous down that way. A lot of uh, GS is boring. <laughs> okay, whatever you say. Um, would you recommend any leather shoulder bag? I've got some high-end bags uh, reviews here on my channel of a couple of bags. Uh, let me grab a couple of them real quick, and then I'm going to wrap this up. here all right this is Colonel Littleton it makes this bag and I bought this to carry the um, you can use this kind of like an EDC bag I've got the this is really great to carry an iPad um, then I've got a microphone and, and a mixer and some other things that I can hook up to the iPad or the iPhone and do a video if I need to and there's some other things in here that are kind of designed to go with that kit. Um, so Colonel Littleton, he makes some really good stuff and he makes all kinds of different bags, different sizes, different configurations. So take a look at his stuff. I review on my channel, by the way, on that. And then here's a bag. This is by, um, what's the company? This is, this is called a Heirloom Messenger Bag as in something you'd inherit, an, an heirloom. This is the heirloom messenger bag, and I forget the name of the company, but if you just Google that, you'll find it. And it comes in different colors if you don't like this color. Uh, and I'm trying to find the name on here, but anyway, I don't find it. But this is, this is a veg tanned, all really high quality hardware. Um, this is rigged up for me to carry my uh, laptop in it and then I've got a lot of other things in here also and I've got a full review on this on the channel including all the things that are in it alright so if you want to check that out that's um, a kind of high-end bag if you will so there you go and it's all boring stuff, as one of the commenters said. All my stuff is boring. Um, so there's, there's that. <laughs> um, is Colonel Littleton still alive? Yes, he is. As far as I know, he is. And he's still been in videos not too long ago. And I believe he is. He's a cool guy. Um, to me as a brand. No, I don't think, no, I wouldn't buy their stuff. No. I'll go a little bit higher end than that. Um, yeah. Uh, what else here? My EDC is not interesting. I only carry a note taker wallet, iPhone, and a watch. There you go. Have a great dinner also. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the bell and give the live stream a thumbs up. Well, there we go. Our wags in the house always. Uh, by the way, I sold my Apple stock yesterday at um, uh, two two twenty five or whatever, right about at the high, and then it pulled back. Um, I was up fifty percent on that stock, and I just thought it had such a run, and I sold it. So I might buy it back on a dip. I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but. Arwags, what do you think? Are you still bullish on Apple, or, or has it had its day? Uh, that would be a good question to know the answer to. So, all right, I'm going to wrap this up. Let me just refresh, make sure that we don't have any straggler comments that I've missed here. Uh, don't think so. I think that looks okay. It looks like we've got all the comments in hand. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and have a great weekend all. I'm going to try to do the same. We've got the In the Street Festival here in downtown Frederick.
and the Great Frederick Fair just started. So um, we got a lot of things going on now. Event season is in full swing. So thanks again, everybody, for watching. We have a one-year target on Apple of $300, our WAG's in the house. So you think, you think it's going to keep running? Well, there you go. I might buy it back on a dip. Goldman is bearish on Apple. <laughs> there you go. Um, I was bottom fishing when it got real beat up there. I think I, what did I pay, 142 or whatever the heck I paid? It, it had gotten really beat up. And, um, and I said, what the heck? And I just jumped in and grabbed, grabbed some. And that's been a good performer for me this year. So can't complain at all on that one. Cheers. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I'm going to wrap this up. Thanks again for watching.